Good morning, good morning. Let me just get set up here. Where am I? I don't see me. Oh, here we go. Just give me one moment. Oopsie daisy. Technology is a little bit slow today. What's going on? Who do we have here? Uh, oh, another somebody else hopped on. Uh, try live and. I think I've got one more left. Where is everybody? Oh, here we go, here we go. Hello. Oh, having some difficulty here. Um, I can't seem to pull up my comments. Give me one second, guys. Uh, okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, you can't see my comments. But I will try and catch them on the phone. Morning, Royette. Good morning, Gloria. Good morning, James. Good morning, Jill. Good evening, Jill. <laughs> Hi, Christy. How are you? Good morning, Pat. Um, I can't see my comments um, for some reason this morning very well. Hello, Dali. How are you, sweetheart? Um, so I'm going to have to wing it a little bit. I'm going to see if I can't bring this down a little bit so that I can try and catch your comments. If I don't answer, I'm not ignoring you. I am just not able to see the comments. So first of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody um, who signed up for the Timeless Workshop. It is now sold out. Um, we have none left um because people are still asking for it um i'm going to try and come up with a different version same concept but thank you to everybody the full kits will be mailed out for those that are being mailed out um next week and deliveries will be made next week with the kits. so thank you to everybody who signed up for some reason i've got hair on here and I just wanted to talk about our next um, workshop. This will not be an in-person workshop. This will be, somebody said they were late. Who was that? I don't know. Hi, Paul. That's okay. Uh, hi, Liz. This workshop will be, um, you will be given instructions how to create this album from scratch. Um, obviously, if you need more information, we can get that for you. Now, um, I'm very fortunate to have so many talented friends. Good morning, Peggy. have so many talented friends in my circle. Um, and when I gave these papers to my friend, Royette, she came up with this beautiful, beautiful album. So the way this kit will work is you will get um, written instructions and you will get the um, chipboard pieces and covers and the boxes, uh, which I'll show you. And then you'll get the paper pad and then it's up to you how you want to decorate this. And if you have questions, we'll be available. So this is just gorgeous. So this is how Royette has decorated with our shades of Christmas papers. And 
you can cover the back if you want to you can use different ribbon it's entirely up to you um you can see this gorgeous job royette's done of it being 3d thank you so much royette i had a lot of fun watching the progress of this and um, she's just a master at these um albums now this isn't just no christmas just any christmas album this is actually an um advent calendar album so if i open it up here you will see why the shades of christmas works with this so well because um oh thanks kirsty um because the pad already has these squares um with the days already cut out and roya has been really clever here because i know she always likes to give it to her grandsons and um she's mixed up the numbers but you don't have to do that but i love this concept of mixing up the numbers but this is a really strong advent calendar that can be used every year and then you can see the boxes here now roya has decided to uh, pattern hers and when you get the book you will be able to use whatever um, pages you want from the book to decorate your square so that this your spine your two sides and all your boxes will be cut for you they will um probably be done on black or white depending on um what we decide or we'll see if uh, royat we can get if people want a white background or a black background and we can take it from there and then you will just have fun following the written instructions um putting this together but all the hard work will be done because it will be all pre-cut you just get to have fun decorating it and these are really nice and deep boxes so thank you royette um what a just amazing job so this will be probably for christmas for july um and that's all you basically need um there's a book and the and the kit and the A3 works really well for this, and that's why we chose this paper, not the Vintage Christmas, because this is quite large. And this allows you to use the A3 pad without having to um, join pieces and cut pieces. But I can't tell you in person how gorgeous this is. I would love to receive an advent calendar like this, but look at all that depth. And you can now, uh, hi, good morning. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Good evening, Janet. Yeah, it's an amazing jelly. So I wanted to show that today. It does take time to cut all these pieces and put this together in instructions. So um, do let us know. And uh, we don't want these to sell out because the last one sold out and I'm still getting orders and I have to say no. So thank you, Royette Jensen. This is absolutely beautiful, 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 beautiful. I love how the numbers worked out. And Dali had actually designed this so that we could make an advent calendar. But you're more than welcome to decorate it any way you want. Okay, I'm going to put this far away from me because I do not want to ruin this book. Now, next coming up is today's project. Da -da! Um, look, you can't even tell how much um, depth there is on here. It's just... Oh my goodness, um, this is going to be a bit jam-packed because there's a lot that's going into this, but maybe you can see all the texture on this. And this is my numbers aren't in order. No, they're, they're, they're for, um, this one was done specifically for a child as um, an advent calendar for Christmas, Paul, so that, you c that it's more fun um picking the days of christmas and getting your chocolate or your little toy out of it um but of course you can line the numbers up because we give it to you paul we'll line them up um so hi carolyn so this is really really got a lot of texture on it um so that's what we're going to be doing and then we've got obviously the 3d bulb so good i'm glad Roy, I, I got that right um thank you guys thank you um so we're going to be doing this today this is also part of the royal blue challenge but it's also uh yeah it is les right um but it's also using the industrial denim um, rice paper um you know this is more 
to different ways to use your rice paper. I even painted my nails the other day, um, last night actually. And um, yeah, so let let's go ahead with this. This has quite okay. Let me put it this way. I don't know what I did to get here. Um, I do know, but I didn't. Normally, I really take note of what I was doing. So I'm going to try and recreate this in the way that I think that I did this. <laughs> so, you know, we'll give it a shot. Um, thank you, Carolyn. Hi, Debbie. How are you this morning? Okay, so let me take um, my show and tell black piece of paper off. And let's see if we can recreate this. Um, from my memory which probably doesn't serve me very well so first thing I'll go through the products as I go along because this is an a quick um, technique it's more than techniques it's a finished piece um, that is gorgeous initially I'd strung put some wire on here this comes with a twine so I took the twine off um, but uh, yeah let's go for it Thanks, Paul. I'm going to go for it. I wish you guys could see the detail on this. There's so much yumminess going on. Okay, you're going to be surprised um, what the rice paper looks like and what it became. But again, in mixed media, that's what it's always about. It's always about layering and layering and getting textures. But you can still see the rice paper underneath them. So this is a rice paper that I use. That's the other half I've got left. And as you can see... From here, I didn't even cut it straight. See, that's, um, what can I say? What can I say? Okay, so, let's get going. I'm gonna try and find a decent brush here. Okay, so what I've already done, these are just wooden plaques. And um, what I'm going to do, yes, yeah, sorry, the Stamperia mold. Um, I'm using it right now because I'm doing everybody's um, kits up. But it's um, Stamperia mold K3PTA 4A6. And it's got these light bulbs in it. It's got the big owl and all that fun stuff. I only have two of these molds left. I will be honest with you, I don't even know if Dali has any left. Um, this is the owl from it, so you can see the detail in this. It's just so nice. So this is just done on resin. Okay. I have all my things handy today. So I already put white primer on this because I want the paper to be, uh, you have one, I have two deli. <laughs> um, and now I'm just gonna use decoupage to decoupage this down. And I've gotta make sure now this fits because, oh, perfect. So one rice paper is gonna cover these two plaques. That's just brilliant. Let's see if I can't make it straight this time. I wish I knew how to turn off these, and showing analytical um, things about my Facebook, and it's not showing me the comments on my laptop. Maybe if I go out of it. So yeah, I primed it because you don't want to watch me having to primer this, um, and I thought I'm already spending time decoupaging this and I have lots to do in this live it's like a mini workshop this one I had so much fun creating that I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing like I normally do um, which is not like me because I take notes so I'm just gonna line that up And that'll do. I never ever paint my nails, never. I'm so not a girly girl, Dali will tell you. I'm more of the tomboy in the family. 
um, I don't know, last night. Just had this urge to want to paint them. Probably because I know I'm going to chop them off. Uh, I don't like long nails. Okay, now I'm just going to put a quick layer over the top. Now, if you get any bubbles, you can just massage them out with your fingers. I actually don't have any for once, so it's because it's our rice paper and it's more, more fabric-like and thicker. Um, reason for that is because um, it's more of a mixed-media rice paper so that you can do all this fun stuff on it. So you always want to cover this with your... Um, decoupage matte medium or your mixed media um, stamperia mixed media glue um, because this will protect it for when you're throwing things at it okay i'm just going to give that a quick dry okay make sure that i've got everything down Hi, man. How are you? So this rice paper is from the Industrial Denim Collection and is Sherp 414. It is called Industrial Blue. Okay, so hopefully I just ordered the last one plus Timeless Workshop. Christy, Dali. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to use this. I'm just going to do it off camera because you probably don't want to hear the noise. And it's easier for me to put it up against my tummy. Um, to leverage me to be able to take this off faster. So give me one second. I'll let you admire the original, please. <laughs> Don't like the fact that I can't see the comments. I'm doing ASMR with this. People enjoying listening to rice paper coming off. Okay, so there we go. Just using a little sanding block thing there that I cut in half. Okay, so now we have this. And I always like to know where my um, little holes are. So I'm just going to... Where are you? There you are. Okay, so my paper's down good, so I can put this in water now. And that is that part then. Okay, so next I'm going to use some, uh, my royal blue. It's actually called blue, but it's pretty looking pretty royal to me. 
Um, thank you. Yes, you took the last one. We're ordering something for those who would like one. Oh, thank you, Dali. So we have that, and I'm going to be using some white um, paint, okay? So I'm just going to put this actually out onto... I just need very little... Okay. Oopsie daisy, very little is too much, but that's okay. Okay, and then the next thing that you want to do, let me put this over here. Is you want to take a little bit on your knife okay just like this so and then you're gonna do like a scraping effect okay down your work so what you're going to do is just fill in some of those areas because you don't want it to go everywhere just in random spaces easy for me to do if I'm not holding the plaque up so hopefully you guys can see that so I'm just altering this and introducing this beautiful balloon okay I'm just using a palette knife to pick a little bit up and drag it down you can go a lot of this blue a little bit of this blue it doesn't really matter it's entirely up to you Okay. Oops, look at that now. Mm. Okay. Now what you want to do, you want to do the same thing um, with some white. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do that one right out of my pot. I'm just going to give this one a bit of a dry. So I'm just going to... Oh. Just going to use the white pentar. This is all um, the mats. And then... I'm just going to come in with some white, okay? So you still see the rice paper behind. That's what um, allows you to continue having texture. I love this technique with the palette knife. Actually, I don't think I've shown you guys before, but I really do like it. So what you kind of end up with is something like this. Oh, I missed that, what Jill was talking about. Okay, so once you've done that, come in and dry it.
Sorry guys, I can't see your comments unless I catch them on the my phone, which I'm using to record. So, what did I do? It is the blue, the creamy acrylic semi-gloss blue, and the white is the matte. Thank you, creamy blue acrylic paint. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dolly. Uh, you are paying attention, good girl. Okay, and then while you've got your blue still on your mat, you can just come in and do the sides. I just love this blue. <gasps> Globity glob. Yeah, Jill, you and I are both on crafting together with all brands this week. Is that what you guys are talking about? Like I said, I can't see all the comments. <laughs> I think that's what you're talking about. I'm on on Sunday, 11 in the morning. Um, 7 p.m. UK time. And for those of you who did the YouTube Hop Seaside, they will be announcing the winners. They're just getting all the information together. And whoever wins from um, my submitted, uh, for everybody that commented and posted and followed on Instagram, and then Dali will be doing one. So you'll get a price package from myself and you'll get a price package from Delhi. Okay, just going to take some of the access off my brush Too much access taken off there And it also allows you because you've got the white down to give you a different shade of blue Okay, so that's that um, One more thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this around the sides. All this adds up, you'll see in the end. Okay, now I'm done with that for now. Let's give that a dry.
okay, men. You can always catch up on our YouTube. So next I'm going to be using Journal Art Stamp The Swirl. You can use any stamps. And of course, you don't want to look at what my stamp looks like. I'm going to use the Crackle from the Crackle Rose from the... Um, oh no, I'm in trouble. Was it Bird Song? Um, and then I've already used this. Um, I did this ahead of time. I've just stamped two light bulbs uh, just in black. Um, so let's play with these, shall we? So what I'm going to use is two colors. I'm going to use um, Archival Potting Soil and Jet Black. It doesn't really matter. You can use whatever you want. And uh, yeah, don't look at the state of my supplies. So I'm going to start off with the brown. And I'm just going to start stamping over in different areas with my crackle stamp. This is how you're going to get all those lovely different textures everywhere. So you can see already the crackle stamp at work. Then I'm going to change this over to the black and do some darker variations. And again, I'm not stamping everywhere, just where I feel like it or where I think it will work. Okay, so you see the crackle on there. Hard to see because I've got such a background going on. So that's a crackle stamp. Same thing with the swirl stamp. Uh, oh, it's from Create Our Ink, the swirl stamp and that one. Again, I'm starting with my brown just to have different um, colors in the background. I don't want it all black. And then I'm switching over to the black to get a darker definition, okay? told you this has a lot of layers okay oh, my tummy rumbling I wonder if you guys could hear it now same thing I'm going to take the bulb and stamp with this stamp set when you look at this one that I've got close up you can see the swirls there you can see the stamp set you can see the crackle um, there so it does show through. So this one, I'm going to start off with my brown. And then I'm going to just randomly put some black on. Because I've only got so much space for this one. And then we are going to come in. And we're going to stamp this down. And we're going to do the same thing again. Come in with the potting soil. And then some black. Not all over. And I do want my light bulb to show up a little bit more, so I'll make that a bit darker. And then we're going to do the light bulb here. And then anything left we can bring up here. Okay, so that's it for the stamping. I'm just going to give that a quick dry. You can already see it um, transforming from what we originally had it. And that's the beauty um, of just layering and layering. But look at now, second layer of textures. Oh, thank you, Alison. Now, we're going to put this to the side. I'll give you another look at this, what it looks like. 
And what we're going to do is we are going to um, primer in black our light bulb. Okay. So just using black primer here. And we are just going to give this a quick prime. So that this can sit there and dry while we do some stenciling. Just love the Pentop primer. The coverage it gives is just amazing. Okay, so that is done. Looks like it's got some decent coverage. Next, so we're moving along swimmingly here. We're going to put this aside and let's start off with our stencil. Now I'm going to build up the stencil quite a bit. Obviously, I've um, I'm just going to spray this. Just spraying it keeps it in place. So I just use, um, you can get this from Walmart anywhere actually. It's just a, uh, it's a really big bottle so it's really economical. It's repositionable. Uh, for paper, cardboard, foam, fabric, foil. So you can use it on your crafting projects and everything. It's by LePage. You can get it at Staples or any of your office supply stores. And it does turn um, permanent. Um, the trick is to you can make it permanent. What you want to do when you're doing it with stencils or paper crafts, if you want to make it repositionable, is to spray it on and then um, just shake it back and forth so it dries a little bit so that it becomes tacky and then use it. So I'm just gonna spray this on. You can see I've just got a thin layer there. Yeah, so if you're paying a lot of money, like I know, um, I've told quite a few people, like th this is just so economical, this great big bottle. Um, Cause it's just really is a glue. So I'll just give this a bit of a shake. Oof. And then see, it becomes tacky. Okay, that's my tip for today. So here I'm gonna do, um, put some this down here. And don't worry about my thought process. First, I'm gonna come in with the silver. I think I've got my blue. Um, this is sten silver stencil paste. So I'm just going to come in and do that. I am going to build up on the silver um, because I want to give it more definition. I love stencil paste. I just don't know why I don't use it very often. So this is the silver one. I'm going to take that off. And then I'm going to do some more stencil pasting. Uh, I really like these numbers here, so I'm going to put these numbers here. And I'm just going to randomly go around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my, um, this is called Black Diamond. It's just so lush. And then I'm going to also introduce this because this will give it the darker effect. Told you this has a lot of um, texture. Okay. 
And don't be afraid to go over what you already have down. Take that off. And then what we're going to do, we're going to do some more. Uh, let me give that a dry actually because I don't want to smudge it. The stencil paste is pretty good because you can carry on after giving it a quick dry. So we're going to do the same thing again. We Whatever areas you want to use or don't want to use. I really like the numbers in this. Um, let's get a bit. Let's just do it here. And I'm going to come back to the silver. Put some of that silver down. And then come to the black diamond and same thing again, just do it in some different areas. Just making sure that I don't go over my industrial there. Okay, I'm just going to give that a quick dry. Okay, I love this stencil too. I'm finding that I'm using it more. I'm going to come back over my industrial here. And now I'm going to come with the graphite. Uh, I mean the black diamond. I don't know why I'm thinking graphite. And now I'm going to build this up even a little bit more. And just leave some areas in it because I wanted to give it a little bit more definition. Not complete coverage, but enough coverage. Okay, and then what you want to do is put your stencil in water. And then I always like to have a little bit of texture around my edges. So I'm just going to take a little bit of stencil paste and I'm just going to texture up my sides. And this just adds an extra element of... Um, bumpiness and texture really so just randomly just do wherever you want to and i'm using the darker one because that will give me more definition extra bit off okay now let's give that a dry so that was the two stencil paste that we used there
Okay, so now we're going to set that aside and we're going to come back to the bulb. So, yeah, it's getting it's very, very rich. So, I mean, you could leave it in these colors. I toned mine down a bit. It was very royal blue to start off with. <laughs> but you could leave it in these colors too. But you can see now the stencil paste and all that yummy texture on there. Morning, Terry. So, let's get to this now. Uh, let me find a nice brush. Uh, I think this one will have to do... Oh, here we go. Okay, so now we're going to come back to the dark blue. And I'm also going to use metallic light blue. So this is a creamy acrylic metallic light blue. So these are the two blues. And then of course some white so next step is we are going to come and do our light bulb and where did my white paint go okay so it, you're going to be very interested to see when you put this on black um thanks dally at how much um darker it actually is so i am just giving this a nice coating because I need that darkness. Um, because I made my background quite light, if I don't make this darker, it will not stand out on the piece, okay? So if you're wondering why it's black primer, and I've taken some primer accidentally off there on the bulb, it must have been wet. Note to self, check if dry. Now, you guys know I'm really fussy about my brush strokes. So for me, um, I'm just making kind of going in circular motions so that my <laughs> strokes actually follow the bulb. That's just me, right? Okay, let's dry that. So next I'm going to come in with my lighter blue and I'm just going to start putting it down in this area just like this. And this gives it a very um, metallic-y kind of look, okay? So I'm just going to keep it more in this area right here. I see it slowly starting to transform. Okay, next I'm going to take my white and do the same thing. And with my white, I'm just going to more or less dry brush it on. So put a little bit on your brush. Tap it out until it works its way up the brush. And then I'm doing more of a dry brushing effect here just like this move that circle kind of round now what i've done because i've done it over the wet paint i've got a different tone of blue clean off your brush dry it Okay, now let's give it a little bit more white. So tap it off, work it up your brush, and you'll see now. So you've got kind of dark. Going to lighter. To lighter. And 
and that's how you build up your bulb okay I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing here but it's not really going to matter it's more for um, getting some texture going on okay so that's your light bulb there just going to dry that not that it's really wet I do want to give it a little bit more uh, the lighter blue just on the outsides here because it's quite dark. Build that up there. Okay, so next step that you're going to do is take your black primer. And we are going to highlight this now, okay? We're going to highlight it a little bit more. So just start bringing this in just like this, just gently. Just grabbing the shadows of your light bulb, okay? That went a bit too wide. Maybe I need a thinner brush, right? That would help. So now you can see it's starting to really take on a shadowed effect appearance. Darken the bottom area of it. Oopsie daisy. Okay, so once you've kind of got it there, and you can you can probably continue to work on this. Um, it's just one of those things. You can probably just keep going. I won't make it perfect. Um, okay, so once you've done with that, I can't put these actually in water right now. Once you're done with that part, then you wanna bring in your silver wax paste. And then you want to just go over, boy, this is hard. You just want to go over the raised edges, just like this, just the raised edges, okay? Now I've gone and accidentally gotten it on inside my light bulb, which I don't like, but I am going to put a little bit here because this will give it a metallic look and make your bulb shine even more. But where I didn't want it was there. So you know me, I have to come correct that now. Just have to correct these things. So there's your light bulb. And then once I'm done that part, I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of black on there to darken this up. Don't really have much on my brush. And then I'm going to bring in my white again. You guys are like, this is a never ending light bulb. Um, bring in my white and just do a little bit of just here dry brushing. I really want this part to pop.
okay i know what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna i'm, I'm gonna keep going with this light bulb till i get it to what i think is perfection that's not fair to you guys <laughs> So I hope that it, um, I hope that it looks <laughs> half decent. <laughs> okay, so next step. Now that we've got the light bulbs done, um, let's just go back to our other piece again. Um, I hope you guys can see the light bulb. Let's go to our other piece. And now what we're going to do is we are going to brayer some white on this and you it, this will really um this will really really make it pop so i'm just gonna grab some white paint we're getting there we're gonna be done so just grabbing some white paint and then we're just gonna Pick some up okay and this is just to um, now to soften this and bring out some whiteness again another layer of texture did you see how it's really popping up the um, stenciling going all different directions and different ways but now you'll see it's taking on a totally different well not totally but a different look to what it was a minute ago of being such a bright blue you can see how it's popping up the wording and the letters from the stencil And I'm going carefully because I don't want to over brayer this like I did there. So I'm just going to pull that back. Like I said, I'm trying to mimic what I did. I might not quite get there. So now it's got, it's got a lighter tone to it. I might keep it a little bit darker i kind of like that dark okay so now let's do some of this but before we do some of more stuff let's do our splatters so that i know what i'm working with i've ordered some from pentar some titanium white um I'm actually liking the dark version, but if you want to lighten it up, I'll tell you exactly what you have to do. Whoopsie daisy, not that. Now we've got all this yummy nice, um stencil paste on the sides. And now we're going to come in and do this. This is going to raise it another level of texture. And it's, it is unfortunate that um, when you're doing Facebook Lives or when any, you're doing a workshop, you can't actually see um, what it truly looks like with all this texture. But believe me, this has so much yumminess to it. Now we're on the tail end. Gonna give that a dry. It looks like a great winter Christmas scene. It 
it's like um I can see myself putting white poinsettias on this. So if you want to whiten it up, just come in with your brush and just do some strategic areas. Well, as strategic as you can be. But I really want to keep some of the blue. So that's how I got to this kind of shade of blue. Um, but I'm actually digging more of this blue right now. Okay, so now what you want to do is these are just I don't know the the ay 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 floral wires I think I think I think so you want to take your light bulb which I'm not too oh, I need to fix that I'm not liking it <laughs> so bad I said I wouldn't do this what's wrong with me I need to give it Mm, let me tap that off. Just need to give it a little bit more, a little bit of definition here at the bottom. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Just need to, to give it a little bit more. So, so bad. Okay. Now, you take your little wire. Just wrap it around just like so okay and you can leave that peep oopsie daisy take your black one wrap that one around I wanted to give it some contrast instead of just one color and then i just twisted these two like this and you can cut those off Add in more white if you want. You can figure this out however you want to. And then did the same thing for these. Took my wire and just wrapped it around. And these I just left like this. I actually didn't do all the cutting till after, depending on how long I wanted them. And one more, except I don't know what I did with my wire. <laughs> <laughs> Let me grab another one. <laughs> so these are also what you'll be doing in your timeless kit, something similar. So wrap it around yeah thanks Debbie I like I like this uh, I think it just gives it that um, extra element of mechanical electrician style and then that would go under there now pop some of these off even further you can keep them as long as you want and then before I do all that didn't realize how many wires I needed uh, before I glue that all down what we're going to do is we're just gonna um, thread this through like this the wire now you could also leave this as is and just use it as a wire hanger also. Um, you can do that. It's entirely up to you. I just um, did it this way.
<laughs> okay, don't laugh, everybody. But you guys get the gist. <laughs> Maybe I will make it a hanging wire after that. After that, um, I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. I know you guys are laughing at me. There's a knot in my wire. That's what I've managed to do. Okay, maybe we'll, maybe we'll just go with the easy route and give this a wire hanging, shall we? I mean, what else is a girl to do? That's why you want to do this before you glue it down. Because if you're anything like me, then you're going to end up <laughs> fighting around with this. Did I just say that on TV? Okay, so now you have this really nice, obviously go with the longer wire, maybe add two together. And then what you're going to do, I'm going to be gluing that down with um, heavy body gel. I don't like how they all go the same way. But I can fiddle around with that later. Now, this is where if you want to come in I will just show you I'm not going to do it because I like the dark I like the I like the dark color of this actually more than the other one just today I do um this is where you can come in with your blue and to get that the blue that I got right here all you would do is take a little bit of your blue and if you start brushing it over you'll see it takes on a lighter blue color you see that so that will just take on a lighter blue color i'm not going to do that because i am quite enjoying my white on this in fact i'm going to bring more white into that now because it's just not white enough for me so i can just bring in my white here And then I'm going to do a little bit of splatters on the bowl. I probably won't glue it all down. Um, and then just last thing now. Oh, thanks, Debbie. my edging not last thing second last thing I can't believe I've I've gotten this done as fast as I did so I should have done this before I put this stuff on it but I'm gonna just give this an edging this step should have come a little bit earlier <laughs> before I put the wire on it And then I'm just going to bring a little bit of this into the corners to just give it a little bit of a darker edging. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I've got my brush here with some paint on it. I'm just going to add a little bit here and there to these just to give it a different dimension okay so you can see now it's kind of got like a white rusted kind of look and I still just want to do a little bit more around the edges to bring it back out look I just don't want to stop I told you guys I was having so much fun with this project yesterday project yesterday that I forgot what I did but I think I've done a, a pretty good replica and final thing is I took 
just a roller pen and I just went over some of the stenciling. This stencil paste is amazing. I love it because it dries so quick. And I just basically did some defining of where the stencil was to give it that extra pop. And it is really all in the details towards the end. Now this one's probably gonna be covered, but you guys know me, even if it's covered, I still want to do it. Because you never know, the light bulb might fall off or I might have to change a light bulb if it runs out, ha <laughs> ha. Okay, maybe too many fumes today for you, Pip. I got my numbering here. I do love this stencil. It's got this fraction on it for all you math people. And the same with my industrial here. If I go over it, you will see that it will definitely pop. Obviously, I'm going really fast. And again, um, in just, oh, this is a U. Um, you can make this lighter. As I showed you, you can make it a different blue. You can keep it very royal blue, but I do like the dark look. Uh, I might work on my bulb a little bit. That's the honest trick why I didn't stick it down, probably. And you can just, you really honestly, um, you can just keep coming and doing this and not stop. So that will give you some really nice black air, darker areas in your work. It's no right or wrong way. And then I think I did a couple of little hashes here. I just really wanted to keep it very um, industrial. It is industrial blue, right? So I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't trust myself. If I don't stop, I just won't stop. Let me show you the background first. Just how gorgeous is this background? Just look at that. Look at all that detail on it. I just so beautiful. Yeah, I can see myself doing this for Christmas and then putting on um, white poinsettias. But you know, you can keep going, you can do this however you want. But here are the two versions. So this is more true to royal blue. I really, really hope that you, you like the darker version. I can't see the comments. Um, I like the darker version too. So I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try and lift these up because you know, I can't go without my show and tell. I just love to show and tell. Okay, okay, I got this, I got this. I got this. I almost don't want to cover up my backgrounds. They're just so pretty. Okay, here you guys go. So there's lots of little extra details in there. Um, you can really, really see. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. You can really, really see. Darker version. Yay. Thanks, Debbie. Mine too. Thank you. So here's today's version. And here's the other version. I like the darker version. It's probably good that it's a Facebook Live so I didn't get carried away. So there you go. There you have it, guys. I'll be on Crafting with All Brands on Sunday, um, 11 o'clock our time, 7 p.m. Uh, BST time. Um, bullshit time. <laughs> no, BST time. I don't know why I wanted to say that. Uh, this British time, British Standard time. And uh, Dali's on on Thursday. Thanks, everybody. I hope you loved it. And thanks, Denise. I hope you got some inspiration. This is truly, um, this will look nice in uh, electrician's office. Right, Terry? <laughs> okay, guys, have a great one. I hope you enjoyed all the techniques. This was jam chock full of techniques today. And uh, I hope you will use them in your work. And I will hope you will enjoy working with the rice papers because rice papers are so much fun. And you can still see the patterns of the rice paper underneath. It really gave us our foundation to build on. Okay, so have a great one, guys. And I will see you guys later.
<laughs> yep, good one, Terry. Thanks, Pat. All right, bye, guys.